It can be really difficult to see someone you love drowning in stuff in their own home, and especially if that home also happens to be your home. But I think often when we try to help, we just end up making matters worse. By the end of this video, you'll know what to do and what not to do to help a hoarder declutter and reclaim their space. Hoarding disorder is actually a medical condition that affects somewhere between 2-6% to of the population. It manifests itself in the hoarder holding on to things that might seem of little value to you and to other people, and storing those things in haphazard and maybe unorganized ways. Now while the focus of hoarding often ends up being on all of the stuff in a hoarder's home, the underlying reasons often have to do with stuff that you don't necessarily see. That could be loss or childhood trauma or anything like that. And in many cases, helping someone someone get from their hoarder state to a, a happier state of recovery will require not just your efforts, but the help of a medical professional. But that said, even if your loved one isn't a hoarder per se, but just has hoarder tendencies, these tips will definitely apply to them as well. First off, regardless of whether the person you're trying to help realizes they have a hoarder problem or not, you can't force them to change. And any effort to try to like push them to where you think the goal line should be is gonna end up backfiring. And to be honest, we've done this the wrong way before. We've gone into a friend's kitchen and just had the big picture all the way from the beginning, seeing you don't need half these things, just started taking them out and explained to them, you don't need this, you don't use this, instead of actually taking an item asking, what do you think or feel about this item? And letting the other person who actually lives there make the decision. Yeah, live and learn. We actually stumbled upon a really amazing quote from Søren Kierkegaard, who is Danish. And we've used this as a guideline for ourselves and for other people that we're helping since then. It goes something like this. If one is truly to succeed in leading a person to a specific place, one must first and foremost take care to find him where he is and begin there. This is the secret in the entire art of helping. Anyone who cannot do this is himself under a delusion if he thinks he's able to help someone else. In order truly to help someone else, I must understand more than he, but certainly first and foremost understand what he understands. But all true helping begins with a humbling. The helper must first humble himself under the person he wants to help, and thereby understand that to help is a willingness for the time being to put up with being in the wrong and not understanding what the other understands. This quote really goes hand in hand with what Stephen Covey said, which was, seek first to understand, not to be understood. So when you are trying to help someone who has an issue with hoarding, then a really good tip is to repeat what they say and use their own words when you're talking with them so that they feel understood and they feel seen. So ask them questions and really listen to what it is they're saying. And as you do summarize what they've explained, then Make sure you use encouraging language and highlight the strength that you see that they do have. Yeah, exactly. No matter how bad the situation is, you can always find something positive. Even if it's just a, a path that leads through the rubble from you know their sitting place to the bathroom or to the kitchen, then start there. So for example, you know, you could say something along the lines of, hey, I see you've carved out a path so you can make it you know, into your bedroom without having to turn sideways. And maybe we can build on that and, and carve out another path that leads into another area of your home. Or another one would be, hey, I've seen that you've cleared your whole dining table. That's amazing. Now you really have a space that you can sort things at and you also can have a nice meal here. Now, while you're in this dialogue with the person that you're trying to help, be mindful of your body language. I think this is one of the things that we all believe that we're slightly better at hiding than we actually are. Now, if you're saying one thing and you're being very positive, but your body language is showing something completely different, they're gonna pick up on it and you're gonna be starting off on the wrong foot. Another decluttering tip for how to help a hoarder is to ask the person you're trying to help to explore alternative viewpoints. That could for example be you saying, I understand you want to keep your DVDs in their DVD cover. It protects them and it keeps them somewhat organized. However, could there be a different way you could keep them where they are still protected, but that take up less space? People, they don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So you can give them the solutions there, but really you want to show them that you are on their side and that you are willing to listen to their point of view. And if you've done your homework and you've really listened to them and understood where they're coming from and also what their goals and aspirations and objectives are, 
then another thing that you can do is to help them recognize the gap between the two. So develop discrepancies between where they want to be and where they are right now and what they're saying right now without again, you know, forcing them to reconcile the two. So for example, if their living room is full of books and paper, but they already mentioned that they would really like to be able to just relax in their sofa, you know, sit at their dining table without actually having to push away stacks of paper before they sit down to eat, then ask them how that vision of being able to sit down at a clear dining table is different from where they are right now and what they're proposing in terms of actually cleaning up the clutter. Now, if you're having trouble finding out where to start with your friend, then a really good place to start is to focus on safety. Let your friend know that you care about them and you love them and you want them to be safe. And having all that clutter everywhere around them is simply not safe. You could trip, you could fall, and it's a fire hazard as well. And if something were to happen, then paramedics would not be able to come in and help. Now, if you're really good at organizing and decluttering, you might see a space and think, I can get this done in like an hour. But make sure that you don't push your timeline onto your friends because it will take longer for someone who's not used to making those decisions than someone who is. And this goes hand in hand with not trying to force them to arrive at your optimal solution. They have to ask you for advice or come up with the solutions themselves for it to stick. Now, if you or they need additional resources, then we've made a lot of videos on this topic of decluttering. So check those out up here and make sure you hit that subscribe button as well so you won't miss our future videos either. Now, before we round off, there's just a few more don'ts that are very important to mention. Some of those don'ts are make sure you do not use negative language about their things. That can be referring to their things as junk or trash or even stuff in some cases. Be careful about the words that you use and preferably emulate the words that they use to refer to their things. Secondly, don't touch things without their permission. Remember that they value things differently from the way that you would. Now, if they've invited you in to help, then that's a great step in the right direction but make sure you've got explicit permission before you start touching things or moving things around. And absolutely do not storm in and start throwing things away. You might deal with the symptoms temporarily, but they will pop up again before long, and then the ill will between you will be that much worse. Remember that the underlying reasons for the hoarding tendencies might not be obvious, and if it stems from a sense of loss, then that sense of loss is just gonna be amplified by you coming in and taking away all of their stuff. It might seem like they're better off, but even though it looks better, they're gonna be in a worse emotional and mental state. So don't do that. We hope you've learned a thing or two about how to help a hoarder or someone with hoarding tendencies reclaim their home, and we'd love to hear what was your favorite insight. If you're not shy, then leave us a comment below. If you're a little bit more shy, but still like the video, then give us a like, and then we'll see you next, see week. next week.